I am Jeffrey Rogue Kohut. This is my Potter's Journal for April 2024. Just unloaded a kiln with a series of glaze tests. More important than the unloading now is the reading of them and what they can tell. Um, no John Britt. Um, these are commercial glazes this time. I have mixed up a few of my own, but the economy of it, both if um, you're mix using little jars, um, the economy of mixing from a powder, also it gives a more professional look, the dipping of them. Um, if um, you do mix up your own glazes, the economy of not having to stock bits of everything to um, stock a glaze lab. Okay, let's see how I've, what I've read from the pots in the studio today. A kiln opening is no time to judge and look at new glaze tests. It needs to be done later, set, sit back, line them up, and make a, a judgment. Okay, I've used mostly commercial glazes here since they're, this would make this relevant to many watching. This is standard ceramics grape. On the inside of uh, the next row is iron red and Mediterranean mist. These can be bought in one to five, ten, or fifty pound bags. I think Clayscape also gives you the option of buying dry glazes and not having to have water. Pay for the water or pay for the shipping of it to you. And I had a couple of goals. One was to replace the snow on brick you see on the bottom that was a combination that I've really used a lot of okay like on this jar um, over the slip and then with the up darker glaze or another glaze on the inside and down um, that's the way these tests are put together here it's a very typical way of glazing a mug a pot with something darker on the inside and lighter on the outside so I need to replace something that's been discontinued. And uh, the first thing I'm looking at is the their new um, oh, um, um, pink shadow here. Another goal was to find something that would mimic salt glaze. Now not the texture that you see in this real salt glaze piece with the orange skin peel look to it. And the color can vary from the gray here to the brown that you see in the piece behind. Okay, here's a fake piece of mine. When I was doing redware years ago, somebody said, we want blue and white like a crock. So I did do some on a redware and here, not salt, but in a reduction kiln with just the colors of the salt. So a couple things I'm looking for in the tests. So the first thing to look at is the grape on its own. And this I've found is a good novelty. If I do all the pots in this, they're not much noticed. But if I do just the right amount, just a few, it gets noticed. Um, the second one for the interior that I would use on mugs is the Iron Red. It's a bit thin here. It was labeled in the catalog as a runner and I was afraid to get my shelves okay ruined so I did take it very thin the only thing though I do want to say about it is on the inside and on the bottom they seem to be a bit of pitting now this is something that I've seen on collect um, pieces I've collected from big-name potters but um, for my farmers market people taking it into their homes, non-collectors. Okay, I don't think that's going to go over real well. And the color did come out, uh, does, I, I, the color may be redder. I'm going to try it thicker now and see because the image in the catalog or on the website um, did show it a bit more red, which I don't really see any red here. Um, it's a bit thicker there where around the rim um, I did uh, um, uh, the, the, um, I, I poured the inside and then dipped the outside pretty much immediately so it didn't dry and catch um, a second layer. I won't say that it did that. 
and then the next one is standard ceramics Mediterranean mist and the reason I decided to test this one out is okay because I am such a fan of the Mediterranean mist that you see on the pie and on the inside and top of the jar here on the inside of the shot we'll say and these are my tests are are on little pots shot glass size little pots because it gives um, uh, because this is the way I use them on the pots mostly it um, mimics uh, the way I'm going to use them so um, whatever um, works for you the way you're going to use them the tests might need to be done in a different fashion and these were five these are cone five six glazes fired here's cone six I did a how do you do a hold on a manual kiln when it shuts off I put it down to medium and just leave it on for another 20 minutes and then turn it off so whether that's how you do it or not I don't know but that's what was done with the tests and now the six on the outside so this is the celadon it is okay not a transparent glaze so because I'm thinking about the crocs and jugs using blue slip underneath I've already counted this one out although the color um, I think would be good for a croc and jug type thing and on the inside, back to the uh, Mediterranean mist, I will have to do a test or a, a, a video and put the, oh, here we go, the Mediterranean mist challenge up to the sea mist and uh, see how it works pot after pot and then take them to market and see which sells first. Um, the combination, you know, it's a nice combination too, back to the crock and jug thing with the um, iron red on the inside and down whereas I, I don't think I'd use it with the um, grape but um, the grape does have okay if used thicker does have um, okay it might uh, be one that is good layered and might run nicely for people who do that kind of thing okay next is the Molten green transparent. This one is a clear glaze. Probably would let the slips show through for a crock and a jug. Um, okay, on the bottom it is double dipped, and then from my thumb to there it is a single dip. So very different color, kind of a gray. Might work good for my crocks and jugs um, by doing a bit thinner. Um, this one. I may leave just as it is where a few of these I'm going to go back to the buckets and dump off some of the water now I it, 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 in the thin state this was a drip that was made in the glazing I don't like the drip um, it's uh, on the iron red but um, yeah it's a good combination there too and then the novelty of the grape um, back to drips being good or bad okay the next one is the pale seaweed now this one I'm gonna have to go back it's too thin on the bottom um, and pour off some of the water from the glaze it's a bit thicker there very thin there and back here I've got a test of it I did a year or two back where it is okay over a white slip and much much thicker so um, the thickness of the glaze okay will mean a lot and I'm not using a hydrometer if um, this is a you're a home hobbyist maybe it doesn't matter you want to buy a piece of equipment for fifty dollars um, you can't make do with the ones that aren't for glazes they're just not um, gonna work for you but um, just do a few tests and that's what I did here I tested it I will dump water off the glaze um, although I have a hydrometer it's easier to just test it once for me 
and then pour the water off the glaze. But um, here, the drip, it's a very nice drip of the Mediterranean mist, even over a thin layer of the pale seaweed, whereas the iron red, okay, where was that drip? Oh, very, very ugly drip. Okay, I wiped it off on the bottom, but there, it just looks like a drip. Whereas the Mediterranean mist made a nice drip. Um, and you know, this is all reclaimed clay, so some of it has more specks than others. So the pale seaweed without the specks, and I think with the specks, um, looks a lot better. This would, surprisingly, I think work very good on my crocs and jugs, that there are a lot of old ones that have exactly that color to it and texture. Some of them are old pieces are very thin on the salt. Um, also on the cro for my glaze on the Crocs and Drugs, this is um, a waster glaze. This is the glaze that when you clean off the bottom with a sponge, I collect it in the bucket, the cleaning bu uh, bucket, when you wash off your brushes when you wash off a whisk or drill or your hand to mix the glazes. Um, it took me three years to collect, of collecting, and I've got a five gallon bucket of what I'm going to call a waster glaze. And it makes a very nice combination with the Mediterranean mist there and with the iron and with the grape. Um, and it pulls nicely in the, uh, these are not throw rings, but were put in there intentionally with the tool after making the pot. So, interesting. So, of the <laughs> ones I was thinking about for doing, okay, there they are back there, the Crocs and Jug type thing, <laughs> they would all work. But the one I never thought I would chose the pale seaweed is one that I just may consider using. I'll test these now to see if the, um, and this is clear, so if the slip, wear, slip decorating blue um, will show through. And now my re main reason for doing the test, replacing the snow on brick and trying out the pink shadow. Now somebody, and um, I wouldn't um, take anybody's glazing or glaze test videos as law, <laughs> no matter how big or small they are. This is just um, my random thoughts. But somebody said the reason you need to mix your own glazes is because they may be discontinued like this one was. Well, discontinued because the materials were no longer available or being mined. So even if you're using your own glaze, that wouldn't apply. Your own glaze may be discontinued as well. But um, the pink shadow, this is the first one where I really saw the running and the, of the sea mist. Um, there, I'm sorry, the Mediterranean mist. Um, over here, the new pink shadow. So this is new. It is now, I saw on their website. Actually, I think they've got three different websites, depending if it's from New York, Chicago, or Pittsburgh. But um, um, I, it's, it's rather thick. It's rather thick. I think I did a double dip because I see here it's a bit thinner from there to there. So I think um, I dipped it up to here and then I did the inside and dipped it down to there and then I put an extra coat on the very bottom there. So very thick. It's a very pink shadow, very high gloss. And the first one where the Mediterranean mist did run a bit. Um, and and um, the, here's what I, I had been using, the um, snow on brick from them. And here's why I didn't like it. It was occasionally getting a pinhole here, maybe because of the hold that I did, smooth and um, all right for sale. But um, it, it did this a lot, which is why I used it kind of sparingly. And I see the Mediterranean mist doesn't run as much on that one. 
Um, let's see, how did it do on the okay the um, pink shadow with the iron red? Um, uh, people who don't use the slip on the outside of their pots to decorate the way I do and just use two glazes. Um, very typical way of people to glaze a mug with uh, a glaze on the outside and the one on the in and the overlap. Um, nice combo there with the iron red. Oh, and with the huh, and with the um, grape. Okay, very nice overlap with the grape over the pink shadow. So maybe I found a glaze that I'm going to like. I haven't come up with um, one of my own. In fact, I do have one that I probably need to... Okay, um, and uh, yeah the iron red with the uh, discontinued glaze too I have um, enough of this to last me a couple years yet and here's where it really did some nice things overlapping that um, they make a layering glaze what do they call it um, that's especially good for layering other glazes over it and that just might be what it's called in the catalog layering glaze so if I do collect a few more of the glazes maybe I'll get that and try it out so one here I might add a little more water to a couple I might drain some off yet I will do all of these glazes again with the sea mist and I will do another row of tests with one I didn't do um, an oatmeal blend that I've got uh, another glaze discontinued that I have blended a few others with so we will keep at this and try it out and see how it works on some real pots and the next test I do will be to see how they all look over a black and white slip like I did here a few years back ago with the pale seaweed so I will say stop back and see what's going on in the studio next week